I usually allow it to sit for a few minutes until I can see the oils from the clay leaching into the paper. So here along the edges, you can see the paper is still white right there and that the paper's been sitting about 10 minutes, so it's leaching. Keep in mind that sometimes when you put chunky glitter in the clay, it interferes with your cutter going all the way through all of the layers. So you may have to do some cutting with your bleed. So I'm going to set this aside and clean up what I can with my X-Acto knife. It's just because of, see the big flakes of the chunky glitter? They just get in the way. And it's not a not really a big, huge deal. It's just that you have to be aware of that so that you can get in there and fix it. Remember, whatever you put in the oven is what you get out of the oven. So you want to do your best with cleanup before it goes in. After baking, I will come back with a sander and sand off any of the funky edges on that glitter that I can't fix right now. Sometimes if you cut overly too much in this stage, you, you kind of lose the edges. So you just want to do what looks best to you. Remember, you don't have to be perfect. Sometimes that striving for perfection can hold you back from actually just getting things done. So here I can see that my cutter hit some glitter and kind of missed this whole area of the background. So I'm gonna just slice it off. And I want these butterflies to have bodies too. So I'm going to take some of that scrap, that darker colored scrap and make a body. In fact, I have a whole bunch of it along the edge here that was not covered by the transfer that I can borrow some scraps from to make butterfly bodies. So I've mixed that scrap into a cohesive color and I don't want these bodies to be 
huge, so I'm just going to use, might even use less than this. And I'm going to make kind of a teardrop shape. put here and then I'm going to give them a little head. So for this I'll use a tool to do some little ribs on the body and then give them a little round head. Oh my goodness. Right here. Sorry. Okay, and I think that that might even be where, yeah, we hang this earring from. So I'll make sure that it's kind of flat. I've got a little ball tool here so I can maybe give them some eyeballs. And then I wanted to show you one of my favorite things to do with glitter. This kit, I'm working with some pieces from a kit and it came with this red glitter. And I like to use this sort of pickup tool. This is a, we call this a crystal catcher and place bits of glitter around instead of just dumping it, just kind of add a little, little specks here and there where I think I'd like to see the little flash of red. So then he's kind of accented instead of covered with red glitter. And then I find that these little specks, they catch the light. And he has glitter inside of his wings as well. So we don't need to overdo it on the surface. I am going to clear coat this also because that really brings out the glitter that's hiding underneath. And of course I can't sand this into shininess because it has the magic transfer paper inside of it on top of it. So you'd sand that right off. So we don't wanna do that. So we're going to use a clear coat. You can use UV resin or any clay appropriate glaze. You can Google and find blog articles and things that have been written about clay appropriate glazers. And I'm going to come back and drill a hole at the top of his head for the, um, for, you know, to put the, Sorry, I'm just going to roll this to get these little pieces to stick to the clay, the ones that are already stuck on the wax. Um, yep, to get a jump ring through his head and into the earring stud, we will drill a hole after he's baked. Feel like that's enough just little accents here and there as i'm looking at my earring findings that i'm going to use i'm thinking you know what i'll show you a little trick here to make everything matchy we're just going to fill the holes with some of this clay and bake them Just like that, just make like an inlay. You don't 
don't want it to be too thick so that it's like, I don't want it to be protruding and popping out. I just want it to be kind of just enough to fill this space. So when I get it in there, I'll squeeze it, and press it, make sure it's really snug up in there. And now they're gonna match with my earring. Isn't that cute? Okay, so we will bake all of this together and then assemble the earrings. All right, so here they are. And man, that glitter is so pretty inside and under the resin. So I put some little holes here so I can dangle. Now, of course, you are free to choose how you hang these. You might want to make a um, like a chain and go from wing to wing. I decided that I wanted to go right into the face and dangle it from this flower because it is a butterfly after all, and they go and drink the nectar from flowers. So it makes sense to me. I put a little drop of resin on there because I do want them all to go together to look like they belong together and they are set. And we're gonna use a gold ring. Dang it. When you're assembling, always make sure before you close up your rings that everything is facing in the right direction. Isn't that cute? I love it. 
It's going to dangle so pretty. Oh, really cute. Okay. Last one. And then you can find, um, if you did not purchase the create along kit and get your earrings and stuff, because these were in the kit, you can find similar items, little studs and flower studs and things on Amazon if you go looking for them. That's one of the advantages to getting our kits is that everything comes in them that you'll see on the tutorials and you won't have to go hunting for them. All right, so there we go. Thank you for joining me on Polymer Clay TV and come check out createalong.com for tools and supplies and check out our kit club to have more fun projects like this that come with all the cute little extras. See you next time.